the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, imagine this scene. You've heard about a great teacher who sometimes does miracles, and you really don't know a lot about him, but he's in your community. You see him walk up a hillside with a large group of his followers, and so you go up and listen in. Well, what I'm describing is the Sermon on the Mount, found in Matthew chapters 5 to 7. In this sermon, he begins with the Beatitudes in chapter 5, such as, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We hear statements about murder, adultery, divorce, and oaths. In chapter 6, Jesus gives us the Lord's Prayer, and he exhorts, or exhorts us not to be consumed by worry. And in chapter 7, he encourages, encourages us to rely on our Heavenly Father when he says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. The Sermon on the Mount is probably the most famous sermon ever preached, and it's sometimes misunderstood. It's not meant to be a comprehensive summary of Christian doctrine. The sermon's purpose was not to give directions and how we can earn our way into heaven. In order to understand this sermon, we must remember the audience, primarily Jesus' disciples, although others listened in as well. It's also vital to remember its purpose. One of its main purposes is articulated by Jerome and Michael Albrecht when they write, the purpose of the sermon was to give believers a better understanding of the God-pleasing life. And that certainly applies to the text before us in chapter 6. God sets, or Jesus sets the stage by saying, Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. That's kind of odd when you think about it. Our Savior tells us in chapter 5, right before this chapter, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. What gives? Well, the key here and in the verses to follow centers on motive. Christians ought to do good deeds to glorify God and not themselves. A writer by the name of Wenzel said, we should let our light shine and show our good works when we're tempted to hide them, and we should hide them when we're tempted to show them. 
Any good deeds should be done out of gratitude for all God has done for us, especially for the free forgiveness of our sins the Lord Jesus earned for us by his suffering and death on the cross, and also the sure and certain hope we have because of his suffering and death of eternal life in heaven. Jesus then goes on to give three specific examples of acts of righteousness that were especially important in the Jewish world at the time. Alms, in other words, giving to the needy, prayer, and fasting. The Lord teaches us that when we give to the needy, we shouldn't make a big show of it. Those who do might receive praise from society, but not from the Heavenly Father. When we give, we should do so in secret. Not even our left hand should know what our right hand is doing. I remember some time ago, I volunteered to help spring clean a large church. I was younger and lighter than I am now, so my job was to climb up a tall ladder and clean off the chandeliers that hung from a, a tall ceiling. And I remember being up there and thinking three things in particular. This is scary. Wow, this is dirty. And there's a plaque with some names written on it up here. Sure enough, Almost every item of furniture in that church had some little plaque with donors' names on it. And I guess that's kind of standard practice in many, many congregations. But one wonders, how many dollars would have been withheld from the church if those plaques were not allowed? And in their place, the words, Soli Deo Gloria, to the glory of God alone, had been written there instead. The second thing Jesus mentions is prayer. Jews in Jesus' day prayed three times a day, at 9 a.m., at noon, and at 3 in the afternoon. Some people would make sure that they were in a public place when it was time to pray so that everyone would see them. In contrast, we perhaps think of the Old Testament prophet Daniel, who prayed even though people would see him. You see, Daniel lived in Babylon at the time and faced death for praying to the true God in one instance, people prayed, prayed to glorify themselves, you know, in Jesus' day. But in Daniel's case, he prayed to glorify God. It's been said that prayers are, are heard by those to whom they are really spoken. Finally, Jesus talked about fasting. The law of Moses only required one day of fasting per year, as established in Leviticus 16:29 for the Day of Atonement. In contrast, the Pharisees, a legalistic group of Jews who lived during Jesus' time on earth, fasted twice a week and would make a big show of it by running around with dirty clothes, unwashed faces, and messy hair. They wanted everyone to know of the big sacrifice they were making for God. But Jesus told them not to brag about, about their Piety, but instead follow their normal hygienic practices of washing their hair and, and washing their hair, doing their hair, washing their face. New Testament believers aren't required to fast at all, but certainly this might be a good idea, as long as it's done from the proper motive. Perhaps some of you have decided to restrict some type of food or pleasant activity during Lent, and that's fine. Fasting can help us keep our sinful flesh under control and focus our attention on spiritual matters. But Jesus cautions us to let it be a matter between ourselves and God. It's best not to tell anyone. The Lord knows you're doing that. Perhaps the best thing we can do in life is to follow Christ's example. Everything he did was done to glorify the Father and for our benefit. Now at the start of the Lenten season, which we're currently in the midst of right now, we especially recall Christ's own suffering and death. During the hymn we're about to sing, number 732, All Depends on Our Possessing, pay particular attention to verse 6, which seems to be a fitting way to close this message. If my days on earth he lengthen, God my weary soul will strengthen, 
All my trust in him I place. Earthly wealth is not abiding, like a stream away is gliding, safe I anchor in his grace. Soli Deo Gloria. Amen. <laughs>